Hey everybody, it's your boy Gerald. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over the use of Golang and how we parse command line arguments. Let's jump into it. Have you ever used the command touch? Well, if you haven't, touch is just a command that takes in a set of arguments and will write those arguments as files. I'll illustrate here. So I can say touch, which now issues my command, and then I can give it a list of arguments. I can say file.txt. If I press enter, touch will create those files. Right, I say files because it could be one or more, and I can illustrate that here. I can say touch, and then I can say file.txt. I can do another file, file2.txt, etc. And I can even put in etc. and it'll create a file called that. If I press enter, I'll have three files here. Right. This is a pretty simple tool, and it's something that I figured we could use to learn how to handle command line arguments in Go. Let's go ahead and jump into the code. Go ahead and open up my main.go file here. We need to declare the name of the package. We're going to call that package main. And then we're going to declare the main function, which is what our Go program and the Go program language uses to execute our program. So the first thing we're going to do is use the variable to hold all of our arguments. We're going to assign that variable a name args, and then we're going to use the colon equal sign to actually tell uh, Go what the value of our args variable is. And in this case, it's going to be os.args, and we're going to use these brackets here. And then we're using the os package, and then under the OS package, we have access to arguments. Now, the OS package itself, the whole purpose of it is it kind of provides a Unix-like experience for all operations across platforms. So it gives us access to these arguments, but then when I compile this Go code, I could actually use that on Windows or Linux, etc. The next thing I want to call out here is that by default, this args value captures all of the args, including our actual program name. So for example, when I called touch earlier, I said touch and then I gave it the file, file.txt, that it needed. Args by default will also capture touch as an argument itself, and that's not what we want. We just want a file to be created based on every argument after touch. So we're going to use this syntax here to capture all arguments, starting from the second argument all the way up. This will cover the case where I want to give our program that's representing touch more than one file name, as an example. I have uh, auto import set up to where it would automatically import the package, but make sure if you're following along that you type this explicitly if you don't have auto import set up. Now the next step is just loop through all of the arguments that we collect and then create a file based on what arguments are provided. So we're gonna use a for range loop. First I'm going to say for, and then I'm going to use the underscore because this is usually the place that would represent an index, but I'm not gonna be using the index in my code. So in Golang, I can use the underscore as just a, hey, I'm not using this. And then I'm going to type what I, the value that I'm going to be working with. So I'm going to be pulling from our args, plural, slice that has all of our arguments in it. And I'm going to work on each individual argument. So I'm going to use the singular form arg here. And I'm just going to say that this is going to range over my args variable, which will contain all of those arguments. And then I can just use open, close, and curly brackets here. And now I can actually start writing my code. We've used the OS package to get the arguments. We've defined a for loop. Now we're going to create a file. So let's do this. This file is just going to be empty. We're just going to say, hey, I have an empty file and potentially an error. You'll see in a second why we're doing this comma error. But I'm going to use the OS package again and then say os.create. And this is going to take in one value, which is going to be our arg that we have here, the individual value that's passed in that's taken out of our arg slice. Now, all I'm doing here is just creating the file. But in Go, there's a specific way to handle errors because this os.create returns an error that we have to handle. So I'm going to, in typical kind of Go fashion, handle this error and check if that error is nil or not. If the error is not nil, then I want to log that error log.idle, and I'm going to pass in my error. Now, the reason I'm using log versus FMT here for format is just because log by default uh, has timestamps and things uh, and should be generally used for logging. We have to do one more thing, which is just closing our file. So we do empty file dot close, and that will close our file and tell go, hey, we're no longer working on this file or doing anything to it. Let's go ahead and test it out and see if it does what we intend it to do. Now, the thing I forgot to do was actually initialize our Go module. So I'm gonna go 
go ahead and do that here. I'm gonna say go mod init, and then we'll just give it a name. Use the hulk.io slash, let's say create file. Awesome. So I want to go build, and then I want to define an out for the file, and we're actually gonna call it create file dash o just gives you the ability to name whatever your binary is going to be hit enter and now i have my create file here so let me do dot slash create file i'm going to assign it one argument at first enter if i list out i can see that file here now so it took one argument which is great but how do i take multiple arguments will it still work so i do create file we'll test 2.txt and we'll do another you know one dot json and another dot text i press ls there i can see those files there and you've now created your own touch utility using golang